AI is not the future, AI is the present, and use the incredible ingenuity that exists in China and innovation, and then try to create a joint solution that can be hopefully world leading. The ties between China and the UAE are ties that span not decades, not centuries, but millennia. And we know you are the world's very first one a minister for AI. And also you were appointed in the such young age at 20, uh, 27 years old at that time. So why does UAE emphasize so much on AI and also why they appoint young minister like you? Uh, when I was appointed in 2017, uh, people were asking this question. Today, uh, it is a fact that AI is not the future, AI is the present and AI is the only way that you as a government can be relevant and you as a government can actually ensure that you're able to proactively provide services for citizens. Uh, we see the advent of things like chat GPT and generative AI. We see the use of AI in self-driving cars. We see the use of AI in manufacturing, in many different industries, in social media and communications as well. My role is to actually ensure that we're able to regulate against the bad uses of the technology and optimize and promote the good uses of this technology. Uh, I think in that essence, age is just a number. There were technology CEOs that led companies that are, in terms of their revenue, the size of countries, and they were in their 20s. So the UAE believes in output rather than looking at age or other factors that might not um, be relevant in the future. And also we know you're in charge of digital economy. And China proposed this concept of digital silk road. How do you see China can uh, do with, with this digital silk road for the region, especially, and also work with the UAE? So the UAE, when it comes to digital economy, is the leader in the region. Um, we have the highest number of technology companies, the highest number of uh, unicorns uh, in our region, and we really are a gateway for the world to come here. What makes us truly unique to China and to all other countries globally is the fact that our population demographics and let's say the mix of the UAE's population is truly global. You have people from 200 nationalities coming to live and thrive here. So if you produce something or if you produce a software that you want to be global, the best place for you to actually test it, deploy it and then expand it is from the UAE because you captivate a global audience from day one. The other opportunity as well is that the UAE has an incredible reach, a reach in Africa, a reach in the Middle East, a reach even to certain parts of Eastern Europe and in certain parts of Asia as well, where people look at the solutions that are available and try to emulate them. So I think that there are opportunities for China to use the UAE as a springboard, but also for the UAE to work with China to uh, hire talent, to actually try to understand what is the future when it comes to the space. Today, a simple example is if you see WeChat, Alipay and, and some of the other um, platforms that China has, they really are the future. So you know, the UAE always looks to China as well for aspiration on these matters. Uh, we know now two countries try to de deepen the comprehensive strategic partnership between these two countries. And how do you see this ever growing stronger tie between China and also UAE? So the ties between China and the UAE are ties that span not decades, not centuries, but millennia. Uh, trade has flowed here uh, throughout the years, and uh, we've always tried to work with our historic partners in terms of actually trying to unleash new uh, trade and growth potential. China is a strategic partner for the UAE. We have worked closely to expand trade, uh, to expand uh, cultural, uh, let's say, uh, closeness as well. And we see that today uh, China is a natural partner for the UAE to focus on as we go forward. Why do you say it's a natural partner? So I think uh, there are a lot of similarities between China and the UAE uh, that also are historic. There are other things when it comes to the ambition to become the best, to become the first. The UAE has um, set that as a target for it and China as well is doing the same. Naturally as well, I think that the UAE is a gateway to uh, the Middle East and to Africa. So China is definitely a key partner for us to help uh, expand the trade routes to Africa and to the Middle East. And also China is a natural partner for the UAE to have scale uh, to actually expand to the Asian uh, continent and the Pacific as well. And we know the uh, UAE just proposed a new initiative called the Initiative for Next 50. 
So how can China work with the UAE in the long term uh, for this initiative? So the next 50 years has certain key priorities. The first is we believe that we are a neutral country and we need to work with everyone. The second is we don't focus on politics, we focus on economy. The third is we want to expand uh, and grow not just our GDP, but also move uh, from natural resources to the new economy, right? So uh, whether that is digital economy, uh, whether it is uh, advanced breakthroughs in science and R&D. So there's a lot of opportunities for the UAE and China to work uh, where we can actually start to use the UAE as a lab um, for providing these solutions, use the incredible uh, ingenuity that exists in China and innovation, and then try to create a joint solution that can be hopefully world leading. Chinese tourists actually are coming back to the UAE after three years, after the uh, Chinese government adjusts its uh, pandemic policy. And actually, when I just landed in UAE, I saw a lot of sign that was that that is in Chinese. Also, go to the shopping mall, I see a lot of sign that's in Chinese. How do you see this growing trend of Chinese uh, tourists uh, visiting UAE? Uh, so the UAE has been a favorite destination uh, for um, our, the tourists that come to the UAE from China. Uh, I think that it's mutual. A lot of uh, tourists from the UAE actually consider China as one of the destinations that they either would most want to go to or they actually go to uh, quite often. And it's not really for um, you know the, the typical type of tourism that people expect. It's not just to go and buy products and come back. It's really to understand the culture, to look at the history, to experience the culture, to experience the food, the music. There is so much to be done. And I think that we're just at the beginning of that relationship.